What's going on guys? Welcome back. Another day, another video, another engine. Same engine. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> uh, as you can see, big VL's gone. Dan came pick that up this morning. Um, he bought with him the rings and bearings that I had ordered. So, massive thank you to Cody at Repco for sorting that out and Dan for actually getting them out here. So, that's awesome that we've got them now. So, they are finally here. Um, Rex cleaned up that sump real well last night and uh, sort of just let it soak in some E85 overnight so we can finish cleaning up all the grit in the bottom of it. These pipes came out pretty good. They're going to look nice in that engine bay. So it's all coming together at the point now where pretty much today's going to be starting to assemble. We got up fairly early this morning and started sealing up the containers and stuff. Had to do some work out there. So did a few things this morning and now it's time to start looking at assembly. So we're doing ring gaps, bearing clearances, all of that. It'll be an interesting little video for everyone. It's a very uh, smoky day here today. Must be a fire around somewhere. Right, so step one is to hone the block. Um, obviously, it gets done before you gap your rings um, because potentially the ring gap will change after a hone, only tiny, but you know, you're talking thousandths of, a, thousandths of an inch, so always hone beforehand. Just got our little hone on the drill, skirt skirt, and just give it a little hone with some uh, lubrication. Rightio, so the purpose of honing is to get all of these marks and stuff off the bores. You want these bores to be squeaky clean. Try and get some cross hatching in them um, and just get a nice shine on them. You don't want to be like, you'll, you'll see when we, the differences, I'll show you a difference once we've done two and left two. Um, you'll see the difference between a honed bore and a non honed bore. Um, so there's not much point. You can see down here how far the piston goes down the bore. Uh, no much point honing further than that point because obviously the rings and piston aren't going to be there and uh, you risk hitting your main webbing and breaking the hone if you go too deep. Don't want to be too deep, just a little bit of uh, CRC WD-40 on the stones and uh, just that nice controlled in and out, controlled slow, just in and out on the hone. So you can see here the difference between some honed bores and bores that haven't been honed. So what you want to get is that cross hatching. You want to try and match your speed of the drill to your speed up and down to try and get that cross hatching at around about a 45 degree angle. Um, and all this does is just clean up the bore surface so the rings have a nice clean even surface to bed in properly and um, seal up nice and good. So that's pretty much all you're looking at. See the difference there. Take that shine off the bores. Righto, so after the hone, give all the balls wipe down with brake clean as you just saw Rex do. 
um, and it's time to gap your rings. Now, your ring gap is going to be dependent on what your intended purpose of the motor is, and the ring manufacturer, and the pistons you're using, and what motor it is. So, there is no right or wrong, really, ring gap. Um, it all there's a lot of depending factors on how you want to gap your rings. Best thing to do is we use uh, old piston because you can get the ring down into the bore nice and square. You want to gap all your rings to the bore. They're dedicated to a bore. You want to leave them, gap them to that bore, and then that's the bore they're going to go in. So um, we're using Hastings rings, and yeah, it's pretty much you'll you'll see the process. I'll just put it on a bit of a, a sped up process. You can see what we're doing. Um, also got a ring filer here. So ring filing tool. Always want to make sure you file your rings towards the center of the piston. You don't want to be filing your rings towards the bore wall because if you end up with a lip on the bore wall, it's going to be really bad for your motor. So. Always file towards the center of the piston and yeah, file them up so that they're the gaps you want. Alrighty, so upon measuring our rings, we have found that they are all much too small. Um, not something we've really seen with LSs before, being the sleeves this hard, but it seems as though these balls actually have worn a little bit. Um, so these rings, they're just going to be... We're going to keep them... The, the gap's not outrageous. We're going to keep this set of rings for, um, you know, another motor that we might do that's going to be boosted or something. When we finally do the Trans Am, we'll, we'll put these rings in it because they'll be fine for a boosted motor, but the gap is just going to be too small for like an NA street car. So, uh, sorry, the gap's going to be too big for an NA street car. So we're trying to get onto another set of rings, get a set of five thou overs so that we can file fit them properly. Um, and yeah, go from there because these rings, the gap was just too big. It's not gonna be right. So I want it to be perfect because it's gonna be NA. All right, so we've got another set of rings on the way. They'll be here tomorrow. So that sets us back a little while again. But anyway, we can still do bearing clearances uh, while we wait for rings. So that'll be probably the rest of the day. Um, so bearing clearances, same thing. Vary with your intended purpose of the motor um, and you know, all that sort of stuff. But there are general rules for all these things. Um, like for ring gap, a general rule that a lot of people go off is four thou per inch of um, bore uh, for ring gap. For bearing, for bearing clearances, it's around one to two thou per inch as a general rule. But uh, again, it depends if you're planning on boosting your motor, leaving it aspirated. Um, depends on heaps of stuff. So Some people, well, the other thing is personal preference. A lot of people like to run bearing tolerances really tight. Some people like them a fair bit loose. So it really just depends on who's building your motor and what the intended purpose is for it. Time is money, mate. Righto, so fresh carrying bearings have been knocked in. Um, as you can see, it's pretty much a two-man job. It's a real bitch of a job. It actually totally sucks. Um, <laughs> you need specific tools for it, as you've seen. Um, it's certainly not one of those jobs you can really do if you don't really know what you're doing. Um, the bearing sizes, they did change in the LSs from 2003. So the, there's three different size cam bearings. Um, they go, there's five, five bearings, three different sizes. 
uh, your front and back are a different size to your three and four and then uh, to your two and four and then your third one's a different size again. Um, so those sizes did change in 2003. They changed sizes one and five. Um, yeah, oh, it's just one of those things you sort of need to definitely get someone who's done them a few times to get them to do them. But as you can see here, nice, fresh, beautiful cam bearings. Ready to go. So now we move on to mains and big ends. Right, oh, so the bearing clearancing process is very, very long process, as I've said in this video already. First things first, we'll get some micrometers and do some measurements of the main journals. And to get some good measurements, you do a couple of measurements around the journals to make sure it's not out around. Um, log it all, and then we use that to set the bore gauge, to set the ring, uh, the bearings in the main caps and put them on the block and then measure them with a um, bore gauge. And that's how you get your clearances. So what we're gonna go for on this engine is around two thou clearance. Um, and it's important to check them because not all bearing shells are always the same. These, we find these cleavite bearings to be um, pretty consistent, but we have found ACLs and stuff sometimes to be a little bit out. And it's good to know because you can swap out, if you've got one with a bit more clearance than another, you can swap out a bearing shell and, and pick it up on the other one, so. So obviously it goes without saying, all of your bearing tolerances are done to torque specs. Um, that should be very obvious if you're thinking about doing something like this. So we're using the old hardware to do our torque settings to get it to torque spec to do our uh, checking of our bearing clearances. And then for final assembly, we will be using all new hardware. So you get the old dial gauge out and do it all up to spec so we can measure it. We'll start at the back, work our way forward. The reason for that is it's easy to get the bore gauge into the bearing you're trying to measure from the front back, working your way forward.
Anyway, you get the idea of the process. I'm not going to bother filming the whole process because it would be a way long video that you don't need to watch, but you see the process, you see what we're doing, so just rinse and repeat for all of the mains, and um, then I'll film a little bit of the uh, big ends. Righto, so mains are sorted, caps are back off. Uh, we had pretty good success with the mains. I uh, got them all to around 2.8 thou clearance, which is pretty spot on for the, uh, the, the journal size. Um, so, you know, this engine will be good at pretty high RPM, a little bit of boost, it'll be good. Anyway, on to mains now, so. Mains is essentially the exact same process. What we normally do is just chuck a rod in the vise, obviously protect it with something, um, so you can do up the rod bolts with the bearing in there, and it's literally the same process. You measure the journal on the crank with the micrometers, and then you measure the actual rod big end with the uh, bearing in it, with the ball gauge, and find your clearances, and if you need to, swap some shells around, to get everything right, mark it all up, and have it all ready to go, and then, um, yeah. Get this done tonight and then come tomorrow as soon as we get our rings, gap them up and then it's ready to be assembled, which is going to be nice and quick and easy because there's not much else we have to do because we've pre-done pretty much everything. So, right, oh guys, so that's all of the bearing clearances done for the big ends and the mains. So, um, actually everything came up quite good. There's not a massive amount of variation. Um, everything's quite round. Everything looks really good. So that number seven, which is a ring in, came in pretty good. Um, there was no damage to the crank on the number seven journal, which was the bent rod, which is surprising. So that number seven still perfectly round and very consistent with the rest of the journals. So, um, although it had that bent rod, everything else seems to have, be, have come out of it pretty much perfect. So that's pretty lucky um, and pretty odd, but we'll take it. So we've got a few rods that are just a little bit on the tight side, but nothing that's worth worrying about. And uh, clearances are going to be all on point so this thing should be awesome but as you can see there it is a very very long and tedious process that pr requires a lot of specialist tools um, so a few things you're going to want to need if you if you're going to be doing that is definitely uh micrometers or micrometers um and ball gauge and uh on ls's particularly to do um torque settings because they're all torque to yield you need a, a um angle gauge because the bolts aren't just torque to a um uh what do you call it a torque setting they're actually you're talking to a torque setting plus an amount of rotation to get the stretch in the bolt that's just how they're designed so um, like i said that was all done with the old hardware when this goes back together for its final um final assembly it'll all be brand new hardware from gm so so with clearances all done now it's time to actually get the old hardware out now the old hardware is sort of pressed into the rods with a little collar on the actual rod cap so you actually have to punch them back out so that's what rex is up to at the moment Punching all the old hardware out of the rod caps, getting them ready to go. They'll be ready to receive our brand spankers. So you can see here on the brand new bolt, that little steel collar. So that just retains it into the uh, actual rod cap so that the bolt cannot come out. So, um, and once the old ones are out, you can just tap those back into the new caps. That's the new GM hardware. Righto guys, so once again with no rings, we're pretty much at a stalemate again. Uh, it's a real shame because it is a really good, nice, still night to be putting an engine together. It would have been the perfect night to be doing the final assembly, but however, we can't do it and that's just the way the cookie crumbles. There's not much we can do about it, but everything's pretty much ready to go now. Um, got all our specs written down, everything's going to be minty. So uh, yeah, tune in again for the next one, that'll be what we'll do tomorrow, which will be the next video. But uh, yeah, tune in for that. That'll be hopefully the final assembly. Hopefully our rings get here in the morning at a decent time because otherwise we're going to be sitting around twiddling our thumbs a little bit, but that's okay. Uh, I'm sure there's probably more to do that I haven't thought of at the moment, but there's probably heaps more to do. Need to flush out the radiator and do all that sort of stuff. Prep all that, but um, still hoping. Today is Friday, uh, so we're still hoping to have this done, finished in the car, running Sunday afternoon. So that is the plan. So. Hopefully tomorrow, which is Saturday, get our rings here, gap our rings, get the motor assembled, get everything together, and hopefully by Saturday night, the motor's pretty much completely assembled, ready to go. And then uh, hopefully Sunday, we'll get it in the car, get it all put back together and um, get the tune on it and uh, take it for a bit of a drive, bed everything in, make sure everything's okay. And then work on getting it back to the customer and having our bit of a break for Christmas. So that'd be great. But anyway. Thank you all for watching. As always, massively appreciate everyone who watches the channel. 
Um, if you like the video, please share it with your friends. Hit like, comment, subscribe. All that stuff really helps us a lot. Um, goes goes a long way. So, yeah. Hell, hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you on the next one. Catch you later. Have a good one.